to discuss uh, what we call Moore's Circle, okay? Um, now, Moore's Circle is a geometric technique that is used to help us solve stress transformation equations and stress tra transformation problems graphically, okay? So it's a graphical method to solve stress transformation type of problems. So basically what we do is we can rewrite the stress transformation equations such that we have this equation that I've already written here, sigma x prime minus sigma average quantity squared plus tau x prime y prime squared equals r squared. And then r is given by this next equation I've written here, which is the square root of x of the quantity x uh, sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 squared plus tau xy squared okay now if you notice from your high school geometry this this has the form of the following x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals little r squared, where h comma k defines the coordinates of a circle with radius r. So this is the form of an equation of a circle, which you should have learned in probably high school algebra two. Okay, so um, so how do we kind of reconcile this? Well, in our equation, sigma average, sigma average for us defines the x coordinate of our circle. Okay. And the y coordinate of our circle is zero. So the center, uh, the center of our circle is sigma average comma zero. Okay. So that's the x coordinate. Uh, I uh, should write this a little more clearly. X coordinate of of the center. I left that phrase out. The center of our circle. Okay. This circle is called Moore's circle named after the engineer and mathematician Otto Moore. Okay. So, um, so this is just kind of some background right there. Now, do you remember what Sigma average is? Well, from our previous video and from the mechanics and materials course, sigma average is just sigma x plus sigma y over two, okay? So how do we build a circle out of this? How do we get a circular shape or graph out of this background? So here's how we kind of define it. So each point on a Moore's, spelled that wrong, M-O-H-R, on a Moore's circle, represents two stress components, sigma x prime and then tau x prime, y prime, acting on an element defined by the x prime axis for a value of theta. Okay, so let's let's kind of take this element but from an elemental approach and then sketch the circle. Okay, so when theta equals zero, then sigma x prime will be the same as sigma x and tau x prime y prime will be the same as tau x y. So let's look at an element 
uh, in an untransformed state. That would be theta is zero, okay? So here is an element, untransformed. Okay, here are my global axes. Now, if, if the element is untransformed, that means theta is zero. It's, it has not been transformed to any other angular uh, orientation. Then that means the global axes, x and y, are the same as the local axes, right? So y would be the same as y prime, x would be the same as x prime, okay? So then here we'll have sigma y, of course. We have sigma x, of course. And then we've got tau x, y. Okay, and so again, when it's untransformed, sigma x and sigma x prime are the same. And also tau x y and tau x prime y prime are also the same. Okay, so let's refer to the point sigma x comma tau x y as point A, okay? So put that in your back pocket, okay? Because we're gonna need to pull that out again in just a second. Now, let's take this element and uh, keep the element basically the same, but let's rotate our local axes, okay? So let's think about this. Let's, let's rotate our local coordinate system 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, and when we do that, we're gonna say such that sigma x prime is gonna correspond with a global sigma y and tau x prime y prime is gonna correspond with a negative tau x y. Okay, so stay with me here, okay? I know it's a little tough to visualize. Here's our element and uh, our global axes, our global axes are still right where they were. Here's Y and here's X, but I'm going to rotate my local axes 90 degrees counterclockwise. So if I take my local axes and rotate them 90 degrees counterclockwise, my Y global axis corresponds with my local X prime axis. And then my my y prime axis is over here pointing to the left okay so so when i map on the stress values here is sigma y but sigma y is corresponding with sigma x prime now because remember along the x prime axis we've got sigma x prime but along the global y axis we have global sigma y, which means that if my x prime axis is along the same line of action as my global y axis, then sigma y will equal sigma x prime, okay? So uh, so then kind of drawing out the rest of this to be proper, what's gonna happen to the shear stresses? Well, the shear stresses are gonna end up rotating along with us, right? So we have here and we have uh, the shear stresses oriented like this, but look in this region over here, okay? Look in this region over here and look in this region over here. Think about this as the local axes have been rotated counterclockwise 90 degrees. So here we would say tau x prime y prime is equal to negative tau xy referring to the local axes. Okay, so we're gonna refer 
I'm going to say let's refer to the point sigma y comma negative tau x y as point g. Remember, we said earlier, I'm scrolling back up for a second. We said that um, each point on a Mohr circle represents two stress components. And that's, that's an ordered pair. This is a point right here, an ordered pair. Sigma x prime, comma, tau x prime, y prime. So that point is sigma x and tau x y when theta is zero, when you have, when you have just the local and global axes are, are the same as one another. But when you rotate this out, the local axes 90 degrees counterclockwise, what does sigma x prime become? Well, we said it becomes sigma y. And then what does tau x y become? Tau x y becomes negative tau uh, x y, okay? Tau x prime y prime becomes negative tau x y. So that's, this is the order, what the ordered pair becomes, okay? And we're gonna refer to this point as point G. Okay, so now what we can do is we can begin to sketch the circle. Okay, so I'm going to say let's begin to sketch the Moore's circle. Okay, so we're going to do this very carefully. All right, very carefully. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just probably scroll on down to the next page. I'm going to leave some empty space here to put some more explanation uh, as I'm sketching this, but I'm going to just go to my next page uh, for, for drawing purposes, okay? So I'm going to try to draw this as clean as I can. So bear with me. You all know I'm not much of an artist. Okay, so here are my axes. My vertical axis is tau, shear stress, and my horizontal axis is sigma, which is normal stress. So let's talk about that first point that we talked, that we, you know, sketched earlier, point A. That's gonna be sigma x, and that's gonna be a tau xy, okay? So that's gonna be right here. And that's point A right there, okay? And then um, I said there's another point, point G, that is corresponding with sigma Y and negative tau XY. So let's say sigma Y is over here somewhere, sigma Y, and negative tau XY is down here, negative tau XY. And this point is point G, okay? Now, this, this line right here from A to G is called, sometimes called a diametric line. That represents the diameter of the circle, okay? So we can go ahead and put a straight line right through there. Let me try to draw that a little bit better. Right there. So GA or AG is AG represents the circle's diameter. Okay. Now, what can we do? We can actually spin this sucker around and form a circle. So I'm gonna try to draw a circle through A and G, and I'm probably not gonna do it very well at first, so bear with me. That actually was not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so there's my circle, okay? There's my circle. And let's see if I can draw this even better. Ooh, man, I'm not messing up as bad as I thought I would. Y'all keep cheering me on. I can't hear you, but I know you're rooting for me. 
Wow, look at that. Probably one of the best circles I'm ever gonna be able to draw on this tablet. All right, so here's our circle. Where, what is this point right here? Well, that's, that point right here is the center of the circle, okay? So I'm gonna label that C, okay? So um, guess what C is besides the center? C is the center, and we said that's defined by the point sigma average comma zero, and we said sigma average is sigma x plus sigma y over two comma zero. Well, look at that. Where is C right in between? C looks like it's right in between sigma x and sigma y. Really convenient, okay? Now, where on here are the principal stresses? The print, I'm gonna scroll up where I have some space left over here. The principal stresses are the points defined by the horizontal intercepts, so like the x-intercepts, quote-unquote x-intercepts, of the circle. All right, so that means that, guess what? This point right here is a principal stress, and this point right here is a principal stress. Now, we said that the numerically larger value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 is the major principal stress. So this right here is sigma 1, and this right here is sigma two, major and minor principal stresses. And notice what is the value of tau at these two points? Zero. Remember, tau shear stress is zero where the principal stresses exist, okay? Um, what else can we find up here? Where do you think tau max is? Well, I'll tell you what, tau max, you should be able to look at this. If you just go straight up, or straight down, you can get tau max. Check this out. If I project this over right here, this value right here is tau max, okay? That's the high point and the could be the corresponding low point on that circle, okay? Now that's, uh, that makes sense, right? Our tau max equation from the previous video was a, had a plus and minus term associated with it, didn't it? Okay, so uh, what else do we can we define here? What about the principal planes that are defined by theta P1 and theta P2? Well, it turns out that theta P1 is gonna be, let's go with red, theta P1 is gonna be right here. Theta P1, and then, but actually I'm, I'm a little wrong. It's actually two times theta P1, two times theta P1. So what happens in the circle in terms of the angle is gonna be twice that of what you get out of the arctangent term. And so this value that you swing around here is gonna be two times theta P2, okay? Uh, and then the, uh, the angle of maximum shear stress change colors again, this angle right here is gonna be two times theta S1, all right? So these are pretty much some, some key important points on this Mohr circle. Um, when we do a numerical example, I think it may come together a little smoother. It's, you know, things when we attach numbers to it may go a little smoother, but I like to give you the background of it before we start throwing numbers into that. All right, so the last little comment I'm going to put in here is um, the principal planes are represented by 2 theta P1 and 2 theta P2 on this circle, okay? All right, next video, we'll have a numerical example illustrating this.